This is Konzenshu, the podcast, episode 317 for the week of December 9th, 2012. Hey, hey, yo, us, welcome to Cons and Shoe, the podcast, an extension of the all-encompassing Dragon Ball fan site, Cons and Shoe. We cover anything and everything Dragon Ball in hopes of enlightening and a little bit of the entertaining. I forgot to do the opening spiel last episode as is, I think for the first time since I started it, maybe episode 10-ish, I felt Awful as I was editing it, but uh, that's my fault. Me, Mike Fujito EX, I am the uh, sort of quasi host ringleader person here on the show. Joining me this week, though, Heath Hujio, sir. It's been a few episodes ish. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm all caught up on GT now, thanks to you. <laughs> You're all fully caught up? Fully, because that's as far as I go in GT. So <laughs> that is where I quit. It's good to have you, man. How's everything are, going? Oh, things are going great. We uh, had a busy Saturday. Now we just had like a chill sort of Sunday. You and I are recording. I've been doing website stuff. You've been letting Mary sleep. Yeah, so <laughs> we're ready to do this podcast. Just get it done. <laughs> Yeah, it's a a very, very chill Sunday. I think it's the perfect kind of day for this kind of episode. Coming off of our GT review of awesomeness number three last week, very, very topic heavy and news heavy as well. We are going to have one of those news and your questions types of episodes, but it is basically almost all Battle of Gods. Of course, the upcoming 2013 Dragon Ball Z movie, theatrical presentation, Japan, Kami Tokami, Battle of Gods. Uh, uh, I, I guess SEO doesn't work when you're speaking. I guess it doesn't. I could just keep going on and on like that and see if anything picks it up. I, I don't think it really works that way. So that's the kind of episode we are going to have, but it is fun filled with all sorts of information and news. If you only listen to the podcast, if you don't visit the website, we have, I, I can't even begin to describe the enormousness of stuff we have for you. All right. So Heath, who is not a robot, uh, uh, we're basically going to news, right? That's my plan. All right, why don't we start with the non-Battle of Gods news, and then we'll transition to the Battle of Gods news, which will then transition to most of your questions that are about Battle of Gods. Does that make sense? I think so. Um, I'm just going to follow along. Follow my lead. Okay. Yes. So the first non-Battle of Gods news we had this week is a new crossover video game that has been announced, Project vs. J. This is a new, we say crossover because it is multiple series, and pictured here on the first promo are Luffy from One Piece, Son Goku from Dragon Ball, and is the main character from Toriko called Toriko? Yep. Okay, and Toriko from Toriko. (laughs) Those are the uh, big three here. Here's the real interesting thing about this, and there is precedent them for this. It's not too surprising, maybe a little bit surprising. There's no platform announced for this game right now. Which is kind of odd. You you know, usually that's something that they preface right away. Yeah, and well, you'll get a game like Dragon Ball DS and be like, whoa, I wonder what system that's coming out on. So sometimes the system is integrated into the title, sometimes not. We don't know a platform for this. People already making speculations based on uh, like character models, which we can barely see. Who knows? Just kind of a promo shot. Uh, so really, all we have is a title, three series, and that's basically it there's no release date there's no price anything like that it's just kind of here's the thing it's coming and uh they the developers here uh, we know namka bandai is putting out the game at the very least but there's no developer listed here they are taking requests or suggestions for additional characters to place into the game and i guess uh, i'm not entirely clear if that's characters from these series or characters from additional series this entire project is very vague right now um i mean other games have been so sort of announced like this before, but I feel like for Dragon Ball related things, when a game is announced, we kind of know where it's heading. Like when Ultimate Stars and D.O.N. were announced, we kind of knew a little bit. All right. Looking forward to this. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a thing. It's coming. It's kind of basic information right now. All right. We good? All right. I think we're good. I don't know. So it's so random. For, 45th anniversary jump. It's kind of, I don't know, it's, a, it's a weird number to celebrate, but I guess it kind of 
ties in at this point. Uh, and then also with that, um, you know, send in your suggestions for characters. They are giving away prizes. All of your entries count. Uh, they're giving away a Wii U, a 3DS LL. We have that as the XL over here. And I think a Walkman or something like that. And so people are like, well, are the prizes the platforms it's going to be on? I don't know if that's reading into it too much, but maybe, I don't know. Who knows? It's a thing. It is a thing. So Heath, why don't you tell me more about merchandise? We have two sets of figure related stuff here yes this uh somewhat ties back into battle of god so it'll be a good segue at the end of this but uh first up we have a new dragon ball capsule r line of figures that are coming out entitled senshi tachi futatabi so for those of you that it would be the warriors once again the soldiers are back whatever you want to call it edition uh these are coming out march 2013 and there was a little bit of confusion when we first posted this so we had some clarification. These are figures that have been released previously. Right. The title is weird because it's like, yeah. again, which means they've existed before, but it's a, like a new compilation of them. Right. And people were saying, well, I have Dragon Ball Capsule Neos and my hunch, we didn't really specify, but the R in this line probably has something to do with re-release, reissue, what have you. Mm, so okay. they're called the Dragon Ball Capsule R line of figures and it features seven great figures that they had selected from previously released figures for these lines uh, we have goku and gohan super saiyan goku uh, basically from the very beginning of bulma meeting goku to the very end with super saiyan 3 yeah it's so, a good mix here yeah it, it is a very good mix well i guess i'd like to see more dragon ball proper because we kind of jump from that first meeting to then the goku and gohan is them arriving at kame house right so we're, we're kind of missing everything in between there but but it's it's kind of hard when you only have seven figures that you're doing it's like, yeah how you, and how do yeah. you fit some of that stuff in and you know what's popular and dragon right. ball z really drives the franchise sometimes and yeah, yeah that's just what you have to do i mean like vegeta with trunks there from the majin Buu, it is that really as necessary as maybe throwing something in with uh like ma jr from the 23rd budokai i don't, I don't know, know but it's it's an iconic scene and it i don't know it works and they only had so many figures to choose from from previous lines so i think it's a great selection don't get me wrong yeah but if you collect all seven then one extra piece comes in each Dragon Ball capsule that you would receive, and you can combine all these pieces to form Gohan looking kick-ass awesome in his journey to the West Garb, and he is riding Shenlong, which a lot of people will notice from the ending of Dragon Ball Z, right? First ending? Yeah, it's a Zenkai Power. It's a last shot of Zenkai Power. So that's what that's from. Uh, that also has previous been re has previously been released as part of a bonus uh, figure for a previous line of Dragon Ball capsules. So again, all eight figures really are not new, but they're new being re-released in time. And they specifically note, for the first time in 17 years, Dragon Ball Capsule of Dragon Ball Z, suddenly in the spotlight with its completely new film release, is undergoing a revival. And then they go on to uh, talk about how they had to pick out, you know, all the legendary scenes from the series that they wanted to re-release. Uh, it doesn't clarify whether this will be the only line of Dragon Ball Capsule R to be released. If there be any other series following this, who knows? Maybe another series will follow of scenes from the movie, but, you know, it doesn't say and we don't know. So that's mere speculation. Yeah, they're not figures from the movie, but they are totally pulling that. Just in time for the movie, kids. Here's a line of figures you may already own. And I think uh, Julian mentioned it last time that this is really around the time. I mean, we're getting close to Christmas. We're yeah. a little over three months out from the movie premiering. This is when you're going to start seeing a lot of the merchandise stuff start to kick in. And they're really going to start to push this stuff. Because I, they note that this comes out late March 2013. It's coming from Mega House. And apparently, Mega House is the one that's making the big push because they are also re releasing another figure, which uh, I own. I was going to say you own this one, right? I bought both of them. And they Did are you? amazing. They are. But they are re releasing cool. the second of the desktop Real McCoy series. Uh, this time, they have relabeled it Dragon Ball Z. Uh, when these were first released back in 2010, they were under the Dragon Ball Kai 
franchise title. Uh, we've talked about this, how history is being overwritten. Now Kai being completely re-replaced with the prior Z branding. It's like it never happened. <laughs> so again, uh, they note that this figure is being released just in time for the movie. So you should buy it because it's epic. And this product is truly a quality 3D recreation which I can vouch that it is. They're actually really nice. This is about, like, well, today's exchange rate is probably closer to 60 bucks. Yeah, I think it's like 62.50 or something like that. Okay. Yeah. But it's based on the 34th volume of the Tonkabon, the cover illustration that was done by Akira Toriyama. So if you are a fan of his manga work, this is a very nice figure to have. Uh, if you missed out on getting it the first time, and you really like it, I really suggest you get it because these, specifically the desktop Real McCoy, uh, are limited releases. Yeah, so yeah. there are fly out. Yep. deadlines, uh, which I guess we didn't mention, but for both of these figure sets, uh, the deadline, at least through um, CD Japan, is December 19th. So that's coming up pretty quick. If you would like to order them, do it now. Get your parents to do it for you or something and say, this is what I want for Christmas, but you can give it to me in April. It's not coming out until then? Well, it comes out, it says late March. Oh, right. Well, yeah, the 2013. The so okay. by the time they ship it to you, I guess you'll get it like the first week of April. Sure, sure. Cool figure. Goku on the bicycle. So go get it. I like it. I like it. So, uh, of course, you can check out pictures of both of these on the homepage of the site. Links to purchase them. Go ahead and do it. All right. So that transitions us into Battle of God's news for this past week. Two unbelievably amazing things. The first one we're going to start off with, I'm happy to say, was a Consensu exclusive break here, uh, simultaneously being uh, divulged on our forum while we were posting about it. And then everyone else picked it up from there. Very, very excited about that. Uh, Heath did some poking around on the new website for the movie. Yes, it was kind of funny because I'm sitting there going through the night before the um, the new website had launched. So I was writing an update about that. Then it was next thing I knew it was 1.30 in the morning. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe I should go to bed. Yeah. I get to work the next morning. I'm like, you know, I didn't have a chance to really look that deep into it. So we started doing some UL, URL guessing, uh, basically just typing in what we thought the address for any of these non-existent pages would be. And lo and behold, we came upon the new introduction section, um, which is actually somewhat hinted at in the news. I found out um, after going back and rereading because the original news post that lists Toriyama's comments on the website says in there that this will be available in the new what they're calling newsflash section, which I'm mm -hmm. guessing once uh, this goes live, the kanji will be for newsflash instead of introduction. But gotcha. What okay. have you. So it did say that they had moved that. And sure enough, when we found the introduction section, Toriyama's comments are in there. Um, there's a brief introduction to the series as a whole, how many copies were sold nationally um, and then worldwide. And then following that is actually a very nice yet brief synopsis of the movie itself. All right, so here's what we're going to do. If you, This is going to be really tough for you folks over the next couple months because you know we're really just going to have the story for this movie spoiled for us, and we're already starting to get there. So we're going to read the synopsis that the official website provides, which, Heath, is this page actually still not officially linked on the site yet? No, it's still officially hidden. Uh, um, it, it hasn't been linked yet. It's still there but nobody's linked to it. At which, this point, it's out there, though. Which is weird. I've looked at the source code. They have uh, tracking in there, so I'm pretty sure that they will they are well aware that thousands upon thousands of people <laughs> have viewed this page. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> All right. So, Heath, why don't I go ahead and read this? And for those of you who don't want to hear it, I, I don't have a timestamp for you. Just come back in a little bit. But we're going to be talking about this for the rest of the episode. So uh, if you don't want Battle of God spoiled for you, uh, tough shit. So what the page says, Akira Toriyama joins the battle. Not only is the real Dragon Ball being resurrected with an all-star cast, but what's more, for this historic project, the original 
author Akira Toriyama is involved with the original work, story, and character design. The story takes place several years after the titanic battle with Majin Buu that determined the fate of the entire universe. Birusu, or Bills, the god of destruction who maintains the balance of the universe, awakens from a long slumber. Hearing rumors that a Saiyan defeated Frieza, Bills tracks down Goku. Goku is so ecstatic that a tough enemy has appeared after such a long time. He ignores Kaio's advice and fights Bills, but cannot do a thing against his overwhelming power and is defeated. Bills leaves, but his eerie remark of, is there nobody on earth more worthy to destroy? lingers on. Can Goku and company really stop the God of Destruction? So that is the story thus far for the movie. Heath, where do you want to go from here, man? Well, I think one thing to note is that very last line. I think we have speculated on this, but it makes it very clear that for Bills, God of Destruction is his title. Yes. He is the entity that balances everything within the universe um, so we, we're already getting a little backstory of who he is. The one thing you'll note is Whis is really not mentioned anywhere in there at Correct. all. Correct. Correct. It's kind of nice because they are leaving something, you know, to be desired. We will come back and let you know who this is, but... I mean, we'll learn all about it probably next week, but for now, there's a little bit of a secret out there we don't entirely know. So that's the story. We we don't know the full story. The way that this kind of reads is more of a, like the early plot of the movie it sounds like and it'll kind of go from there or maybe that's half the movie i don't know what's your reading of this that's essentially what i'm getting is there's um what we see from the movie poster is it looks like they're having some sort of party a gathering you know we've seen this before <laughs> and uh then all of a sudden i'm guessing bills shows up and Goku's like, sweet, I love to fight. Let's get me some fighting action going on. And yep. the two go at it. Kaio, whether he's there or not, somehow tells Goku, don't do it. This guy is bad business. But he, Goku's like, whatever. I defeated Frieza. I can do this. And that's what we know. And then from there, I'm guessing there's going to be another 90 minutes of awesome that we do not right. really yet know about and what does that involve is it goku goes back into the room of spirit and time i mean like how is he going to come up against this villain who from the sounds of it so easily decimates goku and the one thing that i really like so far is it looks like we're actually getting some really good backstory like there's mm -hmm. going to be details that will be divulged things possibly from previous guidebooks that We'll get new to that. information and you know what and that's what's really exciting because not only is it something that's happening right now that we can talk about but it actually is really really new because it's never happened before which could go back to the uh statement from how oh, was it the other week of i can't remember something about dragon ball z and being different from your concepts of that. So that is the story so far. Again, very glad to say that's a consensual exclusive. Well, I mean, it's exclusive to the site, but no one else found it. Dur -dur -dur. Dug it up yeah, for you. It was kind of fun watching um, all of a sudden everyone's like, yeah, look what we found all within the same half an hour. <laughs> It's like, gee, I wonder how you found that. Well, here's the thing. I, I do want to say that, yeah, that happened. I mean, that's just the culture of the internet, whatever. But I have not read or listened or watched to any additional coverage of that story that did not get at least one major detail completely wrong. So please point all of your friends to the Konzenshu coverage of this. We have a proper translation. It's not like a hearsay kind of description of what it is. You got the Japanese text. You've got a proper translation of it there. That is exactly what it says. I've, I've seen people messing up Kayo and Kaioshin in there. Uh, I can't even remember some of the other details that I've seen wrong. Oh, something someone popped up on the forum with and they were just remembering it wrong. But like now that there's uh, no longer a balance in the universe, like, well, it doesn't say that. It just says that Bills maintains the balance in the universe, not that there is now a break in the balance of the universe. Just little things like this are getting shifted already from, I don't know, the, what do you call that? The Chinese whisper game? Yeah. Just things going from here to there. So. Like telephone? Yes, that's what you call it. I don't know if what I said is the racist name for it. I'm not entirely sure. Probably is. I apologize for that. So, uh, yeah, that is the story, which 
kind of takes us into, well, here's his trailer. So on the morning of December 7th, we found out that Fuji TV had aired a new teaser trailer. I guess we could just call it the new official iteration of the trailer post the teaser trailer thing. And this will hit Japanese theaters in March 2013. Yeah, we know that. But there's a lot of new gorgeous animation new characters that we already knew about and somewhat into the story some pictures of trees and whatnot dude dude, we got footage we're actually seeing if footage you want from the to movie. go watch it just go to our website and you can see it it's awesome of course it's coming down and then just making the rounds of other folks posting it and all that jazz but it's easy enough to find at this point yeah so um i think what we can do from here is you guys can pause us go watch a trailer if you haven't seen it yet come back and right now we're going to talk about it. All right, here we are. We're talking about this trailer. So we, we see a good deal of stuff. We see a tree. We see bills with some egg action going on. Uh, we see lots of characters seemingly joining a fight. We see Weiss up there talking to bills. There's a lot of stuff going on that we don't have proper context for. And all of that makes me excited. Like this, whatever this is so far does not give things away. Other than obviously Dragon Balls. Bills fights Goku. Uh, we have Pilaf, Shu, and Mai. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, they really, really threw a lot in here without making any attempt to tell you what's actually happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's good. That's exactly what I want. So it doesn't really spoil anything. It basically gives us what's on the movie poster already plus what we know from the introduction page, and not much more beyond that. So it is actually kind of a relief that we don't know exactly what the movie is about yet, you know, being three months out from its premiere. What was your initial reaction to watching this? Uh, My initial reaction was, sweet Jesus, this animation fucking rocks. I mean, it just looks so beautiful, and I can't wait. I want to see it now. I want it now, Mike. For me, I mean, we've been covering it. We've seen all these updates. But for me, seeing real animation, I was like, oh, my God, this is a real thing. This is actually happening. Yeah. Isn't it kind of weird? Because everything that we've been doing so far has been pictures and text. Yeah, it's a step removed from the product itself. But this was, nope, this is real. Here it is. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we've had other new things before though i mean we've had plan to eradicate the super science we've had episode of bardock and those and of course the jump super anime tour special and i've been super excited about maybe one of those three maybe one and a half uh because we knew about episode of bardock its entire story before its adaptation but this is i don't know this is on a completely new scale of excitement for me. And I think for me, especially knowing that, I don't want to say just because Toriyama's involved, but that it's incorporating new aspects into the story that aren't just super outlandish. They actually fit in. They broaden the story. They make it more wholesale that that it's something you would buy into that this could have been part of the series, you know, more so to me than episode of Bardock ever was. Mm-hmm. That was one of those stories that didn't really need to be told. It was fine as is just whatever. There was a super sign. This is expanding upon stuff potentially that Toriyama is just adding to enrich in the world beyond stories that have already been told. Right. I think that's, the ex- but we don't know. We don't know yet. No. We're going to talk about this with your questions, though, folks. So uh, expect more full detail on what it is we're hinting at. Is there anything else to pull away from this trailer? For me, it's just like hype train excitement. Let's go. I'm on board. Well, I think one thing we could talk about, which I think we're, you know what? Skip it. We're just going to go to the questions because I think everything we want to talk about is in the questions and we can go more in depth there. Probably. Uh, All right, let's do it. All right, Heath, the first question, and we're going to do mostly Battle of Gods questions first, and then we have a couple little extra ones at the end that uh, I just thought were great. Uh, We tossed out this week, I think maybe just a day ago, or maybe more than a day ago, Twitter, Facebook, what you guys got for questions, give us whatever you got, and we're taking them. So the first one here from CashmanX wants to know, do you think the tree in the new movie is the same as the one Toriyama mentioned in the recent guidebooks? So Heath, we need to provide the background for what CashmanX is talking about here. Uh, and then we can go from there. So there's a tree that Toriyama talked about. Yeah, it's the uh, kaiju tree. 
And this uh, actually comes from Akira Toriyama's interview in the Super Exciting Guide character volume. Okay, that came out 2007? Okay. Yeah. In this interview, he describes the planet Kaishin, the kaiju tree, uh, its fruits, the Shinjin, the Makayo, the Makayo Shin, all these fun things that all of us were like, what the hell are those? We've never heard of these things. Right. That was all entirely new information. It was just, yes. you know, we're putting out a new guidebook. I've never talked about this kind of stuff. It's never mentioned in the series, even remotely. Because it was, uh, I believe the question was, where do the Kaio and Kaioshin come from? And right. how are they selected? Because we know that they are very old mm-hmm. and we see two generations essentially. And for the most part of when the Dragon Ball proper that we see in the series takes place, we only have one set of Kaio and one set of Kaioshin. Right. And the um, Kaioshin mostly had been you know, kind of killed off, out. absorbed by Boo. So right. th- there was really nothing there. So this, yeah, it was an answer to a question, sort of interviewee feature thing, adding to the world just because it's a guidebook. And the point of a guidebook is to both reiterate things that have already been said, collect in one place, but also occasionally add to that world. So this is one of those additions. All right. So now um, this comes from Jake, and this is just a very broad generalization of what Toriyama says in his interview. So I'll read this real quick. And it should explain pretty well what the world tree is and possibly its influence in the movie. So somewhere within the cosmos, the planet Kaishin, which in Japanese means world core, comes into existence. On it grows the gigantic kaiju or world tree. The kaiju produces fruit, and from the pits of these fruit are born the shinjin. The shinjin are genderless, though some can look more like men and others more like women, apparently, according to Toriyama. Uh, Their average lifespan is 75,000 years. Their population typically is around 80, and they spend their days studying various subjects in very large castles and whatnot. They are clairvoyant have telepathic powers, and the ability to materialize objects basically anywhere. Very rarely, the kaiju produces a golden fruit from which a special type of Shinjin is born, far more powerful and capable of living for millions of years. And then these Shinjin are picked and they become Kaioshin and so on and so forth. And some some become the opposite of Kaioshin, which are the Ma Kaioshin, Ma being, you know, bad, evil. So they basically have, um, I, and I think this is where the, a lot of people are pulling in uh, Bill's being called, you know, the God of Destruction, someone mm-hmm. who maintains balance, because Toriyama is very much hinting here that there is an opposite to all the good in the world so we have the Kaioshin, the good Kaioshin, and the Ma, the bad Kaioshin, and so forth with the Kaio. So it's kind of a, a nice, oh, zen sort of feel you get to it. Yeah, you, you're balancing the yin and the yang here. We, yep. we know, obviously, the Kaioshin exists in the series. So what he's doing with this explanation is saying where they come from, but also there is this opposing force within them, this race that gets created occasionally. Mm -hmm. Essentially. And, you know, sometimes you get bad ones, sometimes you get good ones. And then apparently at some point they got together, they split up the universe into different galaxies and they assigned people to watch certain things and gave people different positions. But all of these people are born from the fruit of this world tree. So Does that make sense? Yes, this makes sense. So now the question is, how does this relate to Battle of Gods? This was just information tossed out there back in 2007 in a guidebook. Here we are in 2012, looking forward to a new movie in 2013. How does this, we are not confirming that this relates, how are we theorizing that this may perhaps relate to the movie? We're theorizing this because in the movie poster and now featured on the new updated revamped website you can see underneath Weiss is some sort of floating thing with a tree what appears to be a tree on top so many people are insinuating that this tree is the same kaiju tree that Toriyama spoke of in the uh guidebook i like it and something i guess i'll also tout there's clarification is people might be thinking well there's been a tree before in dbz movie three there was the shinseiju so it's named a different thing the shinseiju versus the what is this life tree called in japanese 
Kaiju. Kaiju. That tree obviously produced fruit as well, but that was fruit for the gods. Mm -hmm. So maybe the gods come from the Kaiju and they eat the fruit of the Shinseiju. Right. And you can think of it this way. The the Kai in Kaiju. It's just world. Which means world tree. Kai means world. It's the same Kai that's in Kaio or Kaioshin. My question is, if this, if Toriyama said this in some interview in 2007, was he making was it this planned? on the seat of his pants or did he actually think this through ahead of time? And then if he did think this through ahead of time, had somebody already talked to him of, hey, if we were to do something to expand, how would you do it? Yeah, right. And did like, he come up with uh, this? Or how long has this really been going on? Have they been planning something uh-huh, like this? So, uh-huh. How long has this been in the works? Was was Kai just this testing the waters to see, is the world receptive to more Dragon Ball? And then that was kind of its own debacle. And then they're, they're still going to try to go back to the well of new material. I mean, mm-hmm. the wheels are just turning and turning here. And... I, part of me is like it's Toriyama he was just making shit up and much like Toriyama's writing style where he's able to just pull it around in the end maybe that's what happened here where they're all like you know the series organizers and the planners and Toriyama himself probably like hey you happened to say this thing five years ago why don't we use that oh it's a great idea yeah. or was it like you said oh my god they've been potentially planning this since I was seven or they were just asking Toriyama for ideas because they had planned on doing all these short you know little films like with a jsat special right like right we saw. and a lot of people were saying you know i'd love to see one of these every two years well you know what i would totally be down for a movie like this that fits in canonically with everything just how it works and it so seamlessly fits into toriyama's original work that i think it would be a great way to expand on it and i would love to see one every two years just to go on that point, I, I seriously don't care about defining a canon for myself, but I do get excited about things that could work in the story because then you don't have to play these mind games of, well, I mean, yeah, it, it didn't happen, kind of, even though I'm yeah, not trying to do that. But it's like a movie nine or a movie 13. It's like, hey, this can actually kind of work. That's that's fun. Yeah. I feel like that just makes it more fun. And it is really kind of weird to think about it as in this movie, more than any other movie we've ever seen, is essentially just a continuation of the series, yet it's a theatrical film. So I guess this may be more from a webmaster standpoint of where the hell do I put this on the page? Is this like <laughs> DBZ movie 14? I know. Is this like Dragon Ball Z continued in theatrical form? I know you, you can see uh, when I added it to the movie guide, I didn't want to call it movie 14. I called it, you know, upcoming 2013 theatrical movie or whatever I wrote there. But after it comes out, it's no longer an upcoming movie. I don't really want to call it personally movie 14 because it wasn't to part me, of that original run. Are they are just the original run of movies right, that right. just go from one to thirteen. They were released, you know, what two every year, right? Right. And that was about it. So what? Do you, uh, I don't know. I'm certainly open to thoughts on this. So you know, when you're responding to this episode, be it on the forum, Twitter, Facebook, let us know what you think a, a kind of easy short classification for this movie would be. Uh, maybe I'm just not being creative enough right now, but I'm open. I'm open. Yeah. All right. So our next question comes to us from Michael. Uh, What do you most want to see happen in this new movie? And what do you least want to see? I bet you this is probably Mikhail, but then we do have a Michael after this. That's true. (laughs) All right. So what do we most want to see and least want to see? Least want to see for me is probably going to be, uh, you know, Goku gets beat down and then wins the day with a Genki Dama at the end. That I mean, we've been there, done that. And I can that's a proven formula, but uh, I'm really interested in seeing where we could go further than that with storytelling. So that's my least want to see. Let's start there and then get positive at the end. What do you least oh, want to see? Because we love to be positive. I do. Um, exactly. Um, what I least would like to see, I would least like to see minor characters being shoved to the side. For the entire film. It's tough because like we see Tension Han and even number 18 and folks jumping in in that trailer. But what are they jumping into? And what do they actually do? Like, are they just there for the initial battle and then only the very main still able to fight competitively characters go off yeah, yeah. on their own? Because as far as we know, it's just we and Bills. So it's right. not like there are little henchmen here and there for them to all fight, you know, One Piece style. Mm-hmm. That's my least. That's your least. My most want to see. God, I, I just want 
a good movie. That's it. I know that's like super vague, but I just want to have an awesome time. Whatever that takes, that's what I want. I'm copping out. Well, I'll try not to cop out, but I will say that I fully agree with you. I want something that I can just sit down and enjoy and not be like, what the hell was that? Or why are they doing that? Or, you know, just random questions that don't. I just want it to be good all the way through from start to finish and go, you know what? I really enjoyed that. That was quality. Do you have a real answer? Because I don't. Oh, my real answer? Um, Maybe some fusion of some sort. Well, I guess we know we see that. We do see Gotenks um, in this preview trailer here. In the trailer. I've seen people like, um, oh, do you think Goku and Vegeta are going to do Gogeta? Vegeta was probably out of the question. I don't really want to see that myself. I don't either. That's almost now my new least want to see answer. I don't want to see these new fusions that we've seen only for promotional reasons for Dragon Ball Heroes. Like Super Saiyan 3 Gogeta, is that what it's going to take? Because then to me, you're just getting, you're reducing the story down to who can make the strongest person. And that's not right. interesting storytelling to me. I agree. And it's, it's. I think for me, it would take something away from the film a little. Almost I like, agree. Really, you just insert this character because in the back of my head, I'm going to be thinking, oh, you know, Shueisha said, can you guys include this character so we can push it in our magazine? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a very good want to see answer that's not a super big cop out. I don't know. Yeah, we're just excited. That's it. We just want a great movie and that's what we want. All right, so we'll move on. Michael wants to know, do you think they'll mix it up and have Gohan as the main hero like they did for movie nine? I'm feeling as though they probably won't, but I'd like to hear your opinions. I think that's basically out of the question at this point. I mean, it's been 17 years since a movie proper. Goku is the star. Goku will remain the star. But I do think while Goku is a star, we are going to see, you know, we already know we see Gotenks. Gohan's going to be there. Vegeta will probably be heavily involved somehow. I assume Piccolo will be. Um, so what are they going to do? So Yeah, well, that's the question. What are they going to do? But I think they will be involved somehow. But it's kind of shown in the trailer. It looks like it really comes down to just Goku and Bills yep. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how well they do that. All right. Our next question comes to us from Liam. He wants to know, do you think the film will be adapted into a manga or, God forbid, another anti-manga style adaptation? I think that kind of goes without saying at this point. Uh, I mean, the Jump Super Anime Tour special got both a manga and an anti-manga adaptation because that was animated presentation first. So you get extra promotion by adapting it in other ways. Episode of Bardock started as manga and then turned into animated feature. So I feel like doing an anti-manga of that would be redundantly redundant <laughs> as we've seen before so that's why they shied away from that although they did update the manga with those two extra pages to mirror the animated version of it so it did kind of all tie back around in the end and then plan to eradicate the super science well plan to eradicate the science had such a history to it i can't really do anything else with it at that point uh i think it's a foregone conclusion that we will see uh, a film anime comic for this at some point in the future for around 700 yen now to tie this back into what we were previously talking about you know okay. toriyama possibly coming up with this idea how cool would it be if it <laughs> turns out that toriyama had actually drawn this all as a manga yeah and as soon as the movie comes out or at least when it's released on dvd and blu-ray that they release the manga drawn by Toriyama, you know, an entire volume of it. Deluxe Blu-ray edition. It's, it's a, like, oh. volume 43 of the manga. No, oh, I want it. Give me. <laughs> and it was it. planned all along. You're, and then you're giving from now on, every two years, too much Toriyama credit. will draw a new volume and they'll make it into a movie. Too much credit. I think we're going to get the movie and then we'll get the cheap anime manga Come you know, on, a couple Mike. months later. Oh. I have hope. Just, I don't have that much hope. I think that's being unrealistic. Yeah, I don't have that much hope, but oh my God, if if I could dream, that would be what I would most want. And you can dream. Shonen is for dreamers, Heath. It is so much for dreamers. Fill your head with dreams and teach a dinosaur to ride a ball. That's all it takes. All right, Only be drunk on. for that. The next person here, we got Dustin asking us, what is your prediction for the long-term impact this movie will have on the franchise? Well, I think it uh, depends on how well the movie does. That'll determine its impact. I think it will actually do fairly well. I think it'll help that it's um, kind of a collaboration with One Piece. Toei really loves to do that. Um, well, One Piece is the winner right now. 
So just exactly. tie things with it. Go. So I think it'll actually have more of a beneficial impact than it will anything bad. Yeah, I don't think it's going to hurt But as far anything. as long term, maybe we get movies, I, I almost don't want to say every like two years, like. I think that's too much. I think every I 10 think, years I think they would be spread farther apart, especially if they want the longevity um, to really bring people back. I think a lot of this is banking on nostalgia. Yep. And if they want that to continue, they need to make sure there are many years in between to really pull in that nostalgia factor every time. That's the thing. I was going to mention things like Lupin, which constantly gets specials. I, I feel like you start diluting the franchise at that point. And you could say Dragon Ball has had three significant pieces of animation since 2008. We've had the Jump Super Animator special. We've had Plan to Eradicate the Super Signs. And we've had Episode of Bardock. This one feels different. I think this is the one that they're saying, yeah, we've had those other things. And you know whether you like them or not, I, I feel like you have no soul if you don't like the Jump Super Animator special. But this is the one where they're saying, no seriously for reals this is it guys this is the one and i think if this doesn't do well like you said it's not going to hurt the franchise but if it succeeds that opens the doors for doing more things and i hope they don't dilute it by oversaturating with things of this caliber because if you try to do this too often it's not special anymore exactly which is what made the 2008 Jump Tour anime special just such yeah yeah such a catch was nobody saw it coming and then all of a sudden it's like oh my god are you serious and that's where they got all the hype Dragon Ball Kai on the other hand was well not so much and that's what I think they learned their lesson and I think they will try to avoid that as much as they possibly can but at the same time, they are a business, and sometimes business decisions are not always the best. Don't turn Dragon Ball into Call of Duty and Guitar Hero. Turn it yeah. into, I don't know, let's say Bioshock, where, okay, so maybe someone will do a Bioshock 2, but that's just so they can do Bioshock Infinite a little bit later on. I agree. Okay. <laughs> Keep so that us brings going. us to Thomas, who says, uh, he asks us, think this movie could live up to the hype? Or will this end up being another interesting, but only okay, at best, cash-in? I think we kind of just went over that. I'm really hoping if they tie in some of this information that Toriyama gave out in the Super Exciting Guide, that could really do it for me. I think they have a chance. They have an opportunity and they have the talent to really deliver a spectacular presentation here. And I'm hoping for it. I think they have all the pieces we just haven't quite seen yet how they're fitting them all together. I don't necessarily, yeah, I don't trust them 100% on that, but they've got everything they need. They're just going to do it well. And it, it very much looks like they are putting some nice chunk of change into this. And Toriyama's involved. They have very good animators. The script writer so far seems to be competent. And, <laughs> and he um, is excited himself, too. I know. So, yeah, the only other question I have more is music, but maybe we'll get to that at some point. All right, next one up here from Zach. What do you think the other character Bill's role is? Maybe he means the other character from Bill's. Maybe he's talking about Weiss. I think we've That's talked enough about Bill, so let's talk about Weiss. What do you think Weiss's role will be, Heath? My guess is that Weiss is a Mikayo Shin. You think so? Is it going to be a thing? So. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. So... Bills is the god of destruction. And this is something I was talking about recently in, in the uh, giant, what is it, like 160 page thread we have in the movie right now. And that's the kind of thing to me where he maintains the balance in the universe. What I'm hoping and thinking is that that's the kind of thing that is neither good nor evil. It is just yes. a force of the universe that does stuff. And I think he's been tricked. Yes, yes. I by Weiss is the Makai Ocean. Yeah. Oh, that's what I want, man. That's what I yes. want. I'm totally on board with that because that's where I was going. Oh. But I do think that Weiss is a Makai Ocean. I think Bills is some character who is asleep. He's been taking a very extended slumber. He's missed who knows how many years, millennia of the universe. Right. We don't know. It's just he's been asleep for a long time. Exactly. And all of a sudden he's awake and maybe who's right there saying, hey, I have an idea. Have you heard about this? You should go <laughs> check this out. And there we go. Movie 
done. I All want a nap. Give this. me, give me, give me. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, I can't get enough. <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right, so moving on, we have uh, Richard. Uh, Richard asks us, which non-main character do you want to have a little extra screen time in the movie? I am going to go... You know what? If we're going to tie in God hierarchy stuff, I want Piccolo to weigh in with some opinions. Especially because he has Kami. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that would be pretty cool. Of like, oh, I once heard tale of said thing from, and if they could even tie in like the previous Kami and get in all that other backstory. Oh. Yeah, and but then at the same time, I'm like, well, you never mentioned that ever before, so how come you never said yeah. anything? But I, I don't know. That that's my thing. I just think he's got Furukawa has got well, such great delivery. In a way, just, uh, just think about it though, because at uh, when Shin first shows up, uh huh, he recognizes him. Right, he but can he's tell. Like, He's like, can't remember his exact line of like, I had heard rumors and then, oh right. my God, you are real. Of gods beyond so, gods. Yep. Yes. All right. So that so, can work. All right. How about you? How about me? Um, well, I think we already have a feeling that certain non-main characters are going to get some extra screen time, maybe causing havoc. They're um, jumping into something. And I would love... If they could stick around, not entirely for the in every single scene of the entire film, but if they could pop in every once in a while doing something, and of course I'm talking about Pilaf, Shu, and Mai, I just, to have a throwback like that to the beginning of the series when it all started to now where we are in the franchise, I, I think that would just be golden. I keep forgetting that Pilaf's in the movie. Oh my God, how do you tie this all together? I'm so excited yeah. to see. Now, I know a lot of people probably want us to be like, oh, Tension Han or Yamcha, Kulilin, but, you know, they're going to be there. They're going to do their thing. At this point, I'm comfortable with where the franchise has gone of Goku and Gohan and Vegeta and all of these main yeah. uh, Saiyan characters kind of taking things over a little because that's what the series has become. That's what it is. And when you think of them as mere humans fighting against gods, I I really don't know what they could do. So Shu is going to save the day, confirmed from Heath. All right, next confirmed. question here. Rory wants, I demand an hour topic on Gohan's movie hair. Color, shape, texture, character progression, everything. Rory, you are a bastard. But at the same time, uh, you know, Part of me is like, guys, I don't care any amount you. at all about this. Now, but, 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 up, but I'm up. not qualified to even answer that. And I know people are interested in it. So I'm kind of feeling like maybe we should do a topic about Gohan and transformations and states and kind of definitively give you proper translations of all these statements and then opinions on it. But that's not for Heath and I. That's my question that I've always wanted to ask, but I never want to jump in any of those threads. Okay. Because I do not want to be pulled in. Um, because I honestly just don't care. And if other people care, that's great. But I even, after this whole thing broke out and people were taking over the thread and then we created a new thread for it, I went and looked in the manga. And my question to somebody out there who, feel free to respond to this because I honestly don't know. Is it ever stated he cannot go Super Saiyan? No. As far as I knew, it was just a, we are drawing out your power so that you do not have to transform if you don't want to, because as Goku states earlier, the biggest waste of energy is them transforming. If they can maintain their Super Saiyan form, then just stay in it, and they will be more powerful, and they will not lose as much energy by transforming. Correct, and I believe the old Kaioshin even says, you know, the way to get to this power, just act as if you are transforming into a Super Saiyan. Exactly. That's a, I mean, that's what he says. Just go, Gohan asks him, well, how do I use this power? And, you know, the elder Kaioshin just says, well, just like you're doing your fancy, schmancy <laughs> Super Saiyan transformation. Just do that. That's just been my biggest question because everyone seems to cry out. But is it really something that's a huge deal? Because as far as I know, it's never specifically noted that he no longer can, even in the Daisenshu and all the right, other right. guidebooks. It, all right. So, so we're going to let's turn that into a topic proper at some point before March. We will talk about it. We'll have to pull in appropriate experts on the in the universe subjects and, you know, we'll have actual translations ahead of time. So we're relying on source material. So, Rory, I hate you. 
All right, Heath, keep us going here. All right, then James asks, is Vegeta going to reach Super Saiyan 3? Now, see, I put this at the end of the Battle of Gods questions because I'm not sure if James is talking about, will Vegeta turn Super Saiyan 3 in Battle of Gods? Or is he just asking in general, like in the larger Dragon Ball universe, is Vegeta turning Super Saiyan 3? So I'm going to answer that last one first. We saw Vegeta Super Saiyan 3 pre-Dragon Ball Heroes. The card-based arcade game before that was Dragon Battlers. And they gave out a new Super Saiyan 3 transformation for Vegeta. What year would that have been? I could actually pull this up on a, a website called Konzenshu if I, uh, you know, thought about doing this ahead of time. If you knew how to operate a computer? What is this computer you speak of? It was sometime prior to October 2009. That's when Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta was confirmed for Raging Blast. He did exist before then. And if I pull up... Up to kind of the next update i'm talking as pages are loading on the site this was also october uh yeah there's vegeta from dragon battlers so uh it was around that same time so vegeta did get his super saiyan 3 transformation in 2009 for merchandise and for video games obviously he was in raging blast 1 and raging blast 2 and that was the last we saw of super saiyan 3 vegeta other than also into dragon ball heroes with the uh, additional super saiyan 3 forms so is he talking about here who is this uh james asking maybe potentially for battle of gods will we see super saiyan 3 vegeta i don't think so i don't either I really don't think he'll appear. I think it would take too much time to explain how he got there. Yes, yes. Too much I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, they don't want to have to explain all that extra stuff. Okay, so next question. Alex, what system do you think the next DBZ game will be on? Well, we've got the Jump Crossover game. Uh, That one? I don't know. I, I... That's the kind of thing where it's, I don't want to use those contest prizes as an indication of platform, but I think it would be really interesting because these games have had such a wonderful home on Nintendo systems. Even though Battle Stadium D.O.N. was PS2 and GameCube, uh, Jump Superstars, Jump Ultimate Stars were Nintendo DS. And you go back to the Famicom Jump days of those crossover games, Nintendo has always been a nice home to Jump crossovers. I think I would love to see a cross-play Wii U and Nintendo 3DS game for or, uh, was it Jump Project J crossover J? I already forgot the name of the game. Project versus Project versus J. J. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So that's it. But that's on the DBZ proper game. That's all I'm going to go with right now. We know Dragon Ball Heroes Ultimate Mission 3DS in February. So that's my answer. 3DS. All right. Then we have Frank. So now that the Boo Saga is going to be kaiified, what scene edits and dialogue changes do you expect? We all know what became of Raditz and Goku's mortal wounds. So what else do you think might receive the same mistreatment? I think Bay getting shot is probably the most graphic thing. Uh, I mean, there's gore and stuff in the series, but that's kind of an emotionally graphic thing as well. Uh, I have a feeling that might get cut down a little bit somehow. Yeah. And oh, and the old people. (laughs) Yes, the old. Well, that may not even be in there. Well, yeah, okay. So I think the old people getting shot will be cut out entirely, and then they'll cut out a bunch of frames of Bay getting shot. And overall, I mean, yeah, like you said, there's some blood and gore a little bit. I think more in the international releases, it will be. Um, It may more so this time around be just entirely, no matter where you are, even in Japan, just because it's mainly being produced, as we see, for more of a worldwide release more so than just Japan. I don't know if they're going to put much effort into making two different versions, a uncut and an edited version. Um, I think there'll just be one standard version. (laughs) So I don't know. I think basically Bay and the old people. Other than that, I mean, when Vegeta explodes, you don't really see anything. No, that's all nice and artistic with the shattering and the ashes. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they redo some reanimated scenes yeah yeah quality wise you know what i think we're gonna wrap it up here we've got music questions from david and telmo and uh, i mentioned the last episode i think jerry terrifying has some video game stuff uh we can't answer every question every episode so let's hold on to a batch for the next episode let's call it a wrap right now we've done plenty of battle of god stuff also i have to pee really bad so that uh that kills the episode <laughs> that trumps everything <laughs> 
I gotta pee. I'm hungry. Screw you guys. I'm going upstairs. So Heath, thank you so much for uh, having a lovely, chill Sunday afternoon, uh, early yeah. evening that we can do this. And um, hopefully some people enjoy the little slight makeovers that will be taking place here shortly. Yeah, there's some big stuff coming to the site. You've got some uh, mm-hmm. coding makeovers, additional features to the site. I'm excited about that. We've got screw attack uh, feature previews and all sorts of great things for the Goku versus Superman. Uh, I'm waiting for one last little tidbit for them to post before we post some stuff up as well. I am just so incredibly super excited for things we got going on in Konzenshu right now. I mean, I say it often, but we are... First, best, last, only site you need for Dragon Ball. I really, truly believe we have you covered. Everything you need, we got. I'm so glad that you're along for the ride with us. Please enjoy all the stuff we have for you. And we're having a great time providing it to you. Uh, Heath is coding away like a madman. And uh, I'm working on stuff too. Yeah. No, I've, because uh, I've been doing website development stuff and then i've been working on a new guide for jake so oh, new guides i love it to that yeah and then uh doing some translation work with julian so yeah we got lots of fun stuff there's coming. so many things coming all right man tell the kids where the site is if they don't already know they probably know you can follow us at www.kan did i say three w's i don't know <sighs> whatever you can find us at k-a-n-z-e-n-s-h-u-u Full stop C O M. You can also follow us on the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Google Pluses. We don't have LinkedIn and Flickr and all those other thingies, but you can find us on YouTube. Now you can listen to this here podcast on the YouTubes. Um, and yeah, we're everywhere. We are in everything, everywhere you look. Whoa, oh, oh, I don't remember the rest of the song. Uh, all right, Heath Hujio, sir, thank you again. Thank you for having me, and hopefully we can get some more information coming soon we about will. this great Battle of Gods movie, because I think you and I, our juices are flowing right now, and we are so excited. So excited. <laughs> the man juices are flowing this episode. All right, we're done. No, we're done. We'll see you kids later. We will. All right, Adios. so for Heath over there, for Julian off in Japan, Jake off on Mars protecting the planet, Mary upstairs. My name is Mike Vegito, EXWWW.Kanzenji.com. This was episode 317. We will see you next week for 318. Have a lovely week. Heath, closing quote, go. Closing quote. Uh, the kaiju tree is so awesome, I would love to eat its fruit. <laughs> <laughs>